Hey guys, in this video we'll see how to integrate Google Pay in Flutter. So let's open the app here. This is the first screen of the app. So let's scroll down and we see two buttons. So let's click the first button and we scroll down and here we see the Pay with GPay option. Let's click on this Pay with GPay button. So this opens a bottom sheet and this bottom sheet shows us the email and the payment method associated with this email address. So in our case, the payment method is the one which we have registered in this emulator. If you want, we can also add a new payment method by adding a credit or debit card. But in our case, we'll stick to the one which we have already. Let's click on this continue button. And since I'm in the test account, I won't be charged anything. So as we can see, there is some checking going on in the Google backend. And since this bottom sheet disappeared, that means Google also sent us some response back in our code. So that response we'll see in the next section. This is the package pay which is available in pub.dev and using this pay package we are able to integrate both Google Pay as well as Apple Pay. For integration of this package in Flutter we simply add this dependency in the pubspec YAML and there are also some rules required for Google Pay. So let's look at them. These are the steps which help us to get started with Google Pay. So there are six steps for that. But the most important one is the fifth one, which is request production access to the Google Pay. So let's look at it now. This is the request production access link. And once we click on this manage integrations in console, we go to the tab here. So here we can see if our Google Pay API is enabled or not. In case the API is not enabled, the screen will show accordingly. We can also set up a business profile in the Google Pay console. So this profile comprises of an ID, country, name and address and the approval takes around 2 to 3 minutes. We put in the dependency pay inside the pubspec YAML. Inside our Android app build.gradle, we increase the compile SDK version as well as the main SDK version. We now integrate the Google Pay button which comes out from the package pay itself. Let's see what's the description of this Google Pay button. So this comprises of three required parameters. First is the payment configuration asset. Second is the on payment result. So basically this is the function which gets called when we click on the continue button. And the third required item is the payment items. For the payment configuration asset, there are two ways of providing this to the Google Pay button. So let's see them. First option is to load the payment configuration from a server. Or the second one is to load it from the assets inside our application or inside our Flutter app. In our case, we are loading the payment configuration from our application assets. So if we head over to the assets folder inside the JSON, we see our payment configuration JSON file present. This payment configuration is nothing but a JSON file which comprises of some keys and their values. So all the keys are defined present in the Google Pay website. So each key represents something which is defined there. So let's take the provider key. The value of this key is Google Pay since we are integrating Google Pay. But in case we were integrating Apple Pay, the value would have been Apple Pay. For the next key environment, we are using test. So basically there are two values for this, test and production. The next parameter API version defaults to two and API version minor, which defaults to zero. Since we are using the test environment, the values inside the allowed payment methods are subjected to this environment only. The allowed card networks can only be of type Visa or MasterCard. Allowed auth methods can be PAN only or Cryptogram 3DS and billing address can be required. If we minimize this, we can see the merchant info as well as transaction info. 
So in the merchant info, we defaulted to some ID and name and transaction info, we specified it to be of country US and hence currency code to be USD. In case we want, we can also replace the merchant info with the ID and name from the business profile. Next, we look at the payment items. So these are nothing but the items which we want to send to the Google server. Once we click on that continue button. So this payment item is of type payment item. It comprises of three params. First is the label, which is a text with basic information. The next is the amount, which is the price of the item. And finally, the status, which is either pending, unknown or final price. The final parameter is the on payment result. So which is nothing but when the user clicks on that continue button, this is the function which gets invoked. When the user clicks on that continue button, the result is given to us in on Google Pay result and it's in the form of payment result parameter. Here we click on the pay with GP button. It launches the bottom sheet. We click on the continue and the response is sent to us in this payment result. This is the response which we get in from the Google Pay API. So it comprises of keys and values. So the first one being version which is 2, version minor which is 0 and the important one is the payment method data. This payment method data basically comprises of your billing address. So this is basically the one which you had registered in the Google Pay API. And the second one is basically the card details which you were seen in the Google Pay bottom sheet. The JSON also comprises of a tokenization data which comprises of the token. And this token can be then used to send it to your own API backend server or you can also send it to the PSPs. These are the following PSPs which are supported by Google Pay. So for example, Evo Pay, NTD Data, RedSys, and so on and so forth. There is a property called as type which allows us to change the look and feel of this Google Pay button. So for example, we change it to type book. So this can turn out to be book with GP. So these are the values which are supported as of now. So let's say book by checkout and let's say we turned it to order and then this can become to order with GPay. In case we want to further customize the button, we can also use the raw Google Pay button which is exposed us by pay package. So it looks something like this and we can also then customize what happens when it's pressed, what's its style, and what's its type. That's it from this video guys. Source code and article links are mentioned in the description below. And thanks guys for watching.